Okay, everyone, we're going to go ahead and get started. As always, thanks so much for being here for Episode 9 of Season 2 of Line Change with Coach Ryan Michael. And uh, congratulations on being here for the first line change of the decade, technically. First line change of 2020, so give yourselves a round of applause. (laughs) Our uh, player guests tonight sitting to Coach Michael and I's right are Ben Campbell and Josh Keplinger. If you would, please give a round of applause uh, to those two gentlemen as well. We're going to get to you guys in just a second. The first thing I want to do is ask Coach, uh, Coach Michael about the previous weekend against the Pensacola Ice Flyers. Uh, it was a great weekend. You guys came away with three points out of four in a home-and-home series with one of the top teams in this league, not to mention the team was uh, extremely banged up. But just generally speaking, what were some of your uh, biggest takeaways from this past home-and-home series? Um, well, like you said, it was, a good, it was a good weekend. I thought Friday was you know, a lot better than Saturday. Um, you know, the, the intensity was there, the effort, and, um, you know, like you mentioned, being short, I thought, you know, we had a good, you know, next man up mentality, and, you know, everybody just did that little bit more. I thought the will to win was there, blocking shots, diving to get pucks out, just kind of doing the little things. Um, you know, Saturday, I thought we started a little sluggish. I thought Stewart was unbelievable in that for us, yeah, especially for sure. in the first and, you know, throughout the whole game. So, um you know, bringing him in was good. Obviously proved that pretty well on Saturday. And, and just the fight back um, from not having a good start to generating momentum in the second and, you know, finding a way late in the third to tie it. And, you know, obviously wish overtime would have gone better and, um, or you know, maybe make it to shootout where it's a bit more of a numbers game. But um, certainly getting a point out of that building, which they had been, you know, 9-1-1 in one and one and going into that night was, was a plus for us. Yeah, very tough building to play in, and uh, what a debut from Hayden Stewart. You hit the nail on the head. Uh, really, I think, good things on the horizon uh, for him and the Mayhem goaltending duo. Um, this next question I'm going to ask, all three of you are uh, welcome to answer. Five straight wins on home ice now. That's a franchise record. Uh, no Mayhem team has ever done that before until uh, just this past Friday. You guys clearly have uh, a, a strong a significant advantage when playing at the Macon Centerplex. Why is that? I'll go first. Um, I think there's, you know, comfortability of, you know, the locker room, everything, just kind of being at home is nice, and obviously the fans, and I thought Friday's crowd was great in terms of the number and size as well as, you know, the energy they, they provided, and um, especially after p little fight there, um, certainly got everybody going, so, um, you know, it's always just, it's nice to play at home in front of your home fans, and you know, you guys help Saturday or Friday, excuse me, with, with the size of the crowd and the energy. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with uh, Friday night was definitely the most fun to play uh, in Macon so far since I've been here. Um, so that definitely helps uh, the crowd get behind us. But then, as uh, Coach alluded to, just the comfortability, um, you know, napping in your own bed, uh, eating your own pregame meal, kind of avoiding that, that bus trip uh, is something that definitely definitely helps. Yeah, just just to piggyback, I think I think it's the routine factor. I think being comfortable with with the day of game preparation, morning skate, um, you know, things like that, getting used to the ice um, because we we know how our ice is typically, and um, sometimes when you go on the road, it's a little bit different. And I think kind of being used to our ice and being used to our boards and our rink is is an advantage for sure. So Josh, you've uh, you've gotten into a nice rhythm now, where you've you've played in uh, eight games in a row for a little bit uh, in the beginning of the season, in and out of the lineup a little bit, but you've got, been on a nice consistent roll here. Um, how's that been uh, dressing? You know, consecutive games, uh, eight games in a row now, in terms of getting yourself into a rhythm. Yeah, I think it's good. Um, it's nice to it's nice to uh, kind of get comfortable a little bit. You know, the more touches you get, and you know, the more the more ice time you get, the more comfortable you are out there, and the more willing and confident you are to make plays. And I think that that's huge with my game is, is confidence. And when I'm playing confident, I think uh, I'm a way better player than, than I am when I'm not. So Yeah, definitely. And um, there have been a lot of omissions lately, it seems like, especially on the left wing side, I think. Um, you know, Jimmy Stoper being called up to the ECHL and, you know, with what happened uh, with Danny Perez going back home and, um, and Stathis Umelitis, who had the flu last weekend, um, uh, didn't play on Friday, but played through it on Saturday. He's in the house tonight, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, but it just seems like, you know, you've got no choice really but to take on a bigger role on that left side of the ice. Uh, how do you feel, you know, with that being the case and having had such a, an enormous role in your college days at Lawrence University? Yeah, I, it's great. I mean, I want that. Like, I, I want to make it hard on Mike's and the coaching staff, and I, you know, I want to play the best that I can play, mm -hmm. and I want to do whatever it takes to help the team. And, you know, if that means – put the puck in the net a couple times or, or go run a guy through the wall and, and play a good 10th forward. Whatever it takes is is uh, what I want to do to help the team. So, so Ben, I'm going to uh, address the next question I have to you. Um, you're somebody who I think has grown a lot in terms of your confidence. Uh, you seem to be joining in on the rush a little bit more, helping the team create more offense, uh, and it led to a really nice assist on Zach Urban's game-winning goal on Friday night, uh, taking the puck all the way behind the net and setting him up in the slot. Um, is that, do you think, just more of a, a byproduct of playing under Coach Michael's system, or do you think it's just, a, you know, the way you like to play and you're just getting more comfortable in, in playing here? Uh, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, just definitely getting comfortable as Mike takes over and kind of establishes who he is as a head coach. Um, so that's definitely been a part of it. But then, uh, you know, throughout my career moving forward as far as getting to Macon, that's kind of the type of player I liked uh, to emulate my game after. I liked to, mm -hmm. you know, create as much offense as, as I could and in my college career uh, that's the type of player I was and after you know playing eight games last year and then coming in this year I think it's just a, a comfortability um, and kind of getting used to, to the speed and the size of, uh, of the professional game and um, I've been able to do that you know with each and every game a, a little bit more confidence uh, kind of comes with that. Yeah, and, and before your college career, you played junior hockey in the North American Hockey League. You played in uh, Alaska, right. um, season and a half in Fairbanks, season and a half in Kenai. Uh, I worked in the, the North American League for three seasons and got to know a, a coach who played in Fairbanks as well. He told me it was an unbelievable experience. I wanted to ask you a little bit what that was like playing junior hockey in, in Alaska. Yeah, it's, uh, I had a great experience. Uh, not many people get to live, live up there. Um, I loved it. Uh, the dark gets to you from time to time. Uh, you know, you don't see the sunlight for six months. So, so that gets rough. <laughs> but uh, as far as Fairbanks, uh, we sold out 3,000 fans a night, yeah. packed. Um, and the, the club that we had when I was there was, um, you know, consistently at the top of the league. So it was a lot of fun to go into buildings and just know that you're going to win. Right. Um, so just to have that confidence of, uh, you know, being an elite program in, in that league was a lot of fun and um, you know you meet some of your best friends and juniors and some of the great experiences you have playing hockey so uh, I wouldn't change it my junior career for anything I loved it definitely I mean the, the only thing I could think of that would make that experience rough is obviously this time of year when it's what probably minus 40 minus 50 yeah yeah I the coldest I saw was uh, 63 below yeah so it's pretty pretty it's pretty cool I don't think too many people from Macon can even fathom that I don't know if I can either <laughs> so, all right, uh, last question I have for you guys, and then I'll let the, the fans ask some questions. Um, we have Marvel Superhero Night coming up this Saturday. Are uh, any of you up here big Marvel fans at all? I know that uh, Captain Stephen Pierog is. <laughs> not, not really. Not, no. Not really. I'm a pretty big Marvel fan. All right, well, we've got one. <laughs> I've seen all the movies. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, who's your favorite? Do you have a favorite character? Uh, I, I kind of like them all. Uh, Black Panther was awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, the new uh, Captain Marvel. Okay. I really like that one. Well, have you guys seen the jerseys yet? I have. I just saw it. Just okay. on the way here, actually, yeah. we saw them. What do you think? Very cool. They're sweet. Very cool. Yeah, I like I, the light and dark. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'm a fan of, them, of that uh, as well. <laughs> Heroes but versus the evil. The real question is, are we going to wear white helmets or blue helmets with them? That is a good question. They're they're, they're kind of light and dark. so <laughs> We'll have to ask Evan. Yeah. All right, uh, that's all the questions I have. Uh, the next part of the show will now belong to you guys. You're free to uh, ask any question your heart desires. The only thing that we ask is, as always, uh, just please do so into the microphone. There's a crowd mic that we're going to that we're going to pass around. Um, and if you just ask the questions in there, we'll be able to uh, archive this show and upload it onto our YouTube channel later on tomorrow. So. Uh, so my question is for all three of you. Um, what is your favorite hockey memory? Well, that one's pretty easy for me. Uh, my junior year, 
Uh, we won uh, the CCC, my collegiate conference. Uh, we were like the fourth or fifth seed going into the tournament, so we were kind of, you know, backs against the wall. And we ended up uh, winning three road games uh, against uh, three top five ranked teams in the country to, to win our conference. Uh, and then ended up uh, lo eventually losing um, in the Elite Eight to get to the Frozen Four. Um, but beating UNE in their barn eight to three with, you know, 4,000 people in attendance and just silencing that crowd <laughs> was for sure my favorite experience as far as hockey goes. Um, geez, I'm trying to think because both years of juniors, the teams that I was on, we lost in the championship game, so can't really go from there. And then in school, we never really made it past the first round of playoffs, so we never really made the tournament for school. Um, so I would say it's probably a toss-up between two. I would say either signing to come down here last last winter or spring would be would be one memory, and then the other one would probably be being named All-State in my senior year of high school for the state of Michigan, so that's pretty cool. Um, I guess for me, it would be a uh, senior in high school, um, went 25-0 and 0 to win the state championship. That was pretty cool. And then, obviously, my time here that second year was, was pretty special. Just, you know, from training camp on, we, we realized quick we had a good group, and um, Probably within that championship, I think beating Peoria in Peoria game one and finding out that, never mind, I'm not going di to divulge what <laughs> John Gee apparently said after the game. But, uh, but yeah, that's probably it for me. Hey, Coach, uh, what do you think Dylan uh, Denome can bring to the team? It's um, a good question. I've never seen him play. His time here was, you know, my gap year of playing and uh, coaching. So, um, but from everybody I've talked to and just from seeing him today, he's a, he's a big bodied kid, skates well enough. I think he can be 200 feet um, player, which is, you know, always important to me. And um, even more so just looking at his resume of, of where he played, you know, in college here and then he played over in the top league in France. He's, he's not quite a point-of-game guy, but, um, you know, he's a guy that can add some more secondary scoring to our club. Oh, oh an announcement. An announcement? All right. Yeah. I think this is our first announcement <laughs> in line change history. Saturday night, we are having a raffle for the Marvel basket. It's one for five or three for ten, and it will be available at the table, Booster Club table, Friday night and Saturday night. And a jersey will be included with the basket. So thank you. Great. Thank you. And uh, thanks so much to anyone who's in the Booster Club who's here in attendance tonight. We really appreciate uh, everything that you do for our organization. Well, how many years is it in a row now, Coach? Best Booster Club in the league? Staff is, do you know? Ever since we've been here. Yeah. <laughs> this is for Coach. Um, we've had two embellish embellishment calls this year in Macon. And you got pretty fired up on that one the other night. Um, can you tell us what's going on with this? Um, I'm assuming you're referring to Team Afev. I never really saw the play itself. I saw more of the aftermath. Um, so I was kind of going based off what other people were telling me. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I'd have to see it on film to give an honest to give an honest answer. I mean, I'm all for, um, to be honest, I'm all for the embellishment calls in the right areas. Um, obviously, the game's a little bit, I don't want to use the, the term softer, but it's the stick work and the holding and grabbing is uh, called a great deal more than it was five, ten years ago. So um, 
I think to some degree you have to keep players honest in the sense that some guys will fall a little easier than others to look to try to get those calls and gain that advantage. So, um, I mean, I never really saw the play live to, to tell you, but um, – Okay, then, yeah, then, I mean, he's a smaller guy, so if, if it, yeah, right, so, I mean, if, if if it was warranted, then it was warranted, and if not, I mean, again, it's a three-man system, so it's, it's hard for him to keep track of the puck and everything going on beyond the play, too. So this is for Coach. Um, I know that you're stepping up now to be the head coach and not the assistant coach. Um, has pretty much doubled your workload. Is there any kind of insight on when we may possibly see an assistant coach or even a trainer for our team? The, the trainer thing is, I mean, um, obviously not ideal. Um, we have a bit of a system in place going forward uh, to alleviate that problem. Um, so that's kind of being addressed. And I think that'll be, you know, more at a 100% rate moving forward, which will be good. Um, you know, not only for me, obviously, having a clear line of communication with somebody, but um, for these guys to be comfortable and not have a different set of eyes and ears and a different mouth talking every other day. So um, that's getting addressed, which is good. And then on the assistant coach side, it's it's kind of more of the same. I mean, I'm always I'm still looking. It's just for me, it's it's trust and um, but also somebody that's going to challenge me. So I'm not making a knee jerk reaction and hiring somebody that you know I'm not comfortable with or I don't trust. So. Um, it's it's taken more for me to do, obviously, um, and I and to some degree I need some help, but um, I'd rather make sure I make the right decision than a rushed one. So, hey Josh, um, so we're uh, we're approaching a year since you actually first came to Macon, and those first couple games you started off really hot. I think you had five points in three games, but. Um, so since then, what do you think you have learned and uh, what kind of role and impact are, you think you're able to have on the team now? Yeah, I think uh, the beginning of this year has sort of been a wake-up call from that. Um, obviously, that was in the past, and that was last year's team. So um, I can't say I was like expecting to produce at that clip quite as much, but, I mean, that's – kind of the game I want to play so it's it's been a learning curve for sure not uh, not seeing the puck go in as much as it did when I first got here so I think just just staying confident and not like getting down on myself is is a huge thing um, I think uh, trying to add parts of my game and improve parts of my game uh, playing away from the puck and um, playing D side more is going to turn into more offense and and Eventually, goals and you know offense will come from that. So, <laughs> to kind of follow Thank up you. on that a little bit, um, <laughs> last year when you were here, uh, you clicked really well with Trask and Seamer, mm -hmm. and seemed to really find a good chemistry with them. They're obviously no longer here, and was curious as you've been kind of bounced around, you know, on lines and stuff like that as a lot of players have, but if, has there been anyone in particular that you feel like you've gotten some chemistry with that uh, would help bring back some of that production? Well, first, I'd just like to say that I think anybody would have a lot of production with those two. Those two are pretty good players in their own right. Um, you know, it's a good question. I don't think there's any, like, one or two specific guys that I think I gel with or have – like a lot of chemistry with in particular I think I think you know it's my job to try to develop chemistry with all all the forwards and and guys at every position you know center right wing whoever um, yeah I don't know if I can just give you like one or two guys I think I think our power play has been moving the puck pretty well um, last weekend 
or when we played the three and three against Pensy, I thought our power play moved the puck pretty well. And, you know, so guys like C's uh, and Ortiz, even Cupper at the point, I think, I think those guys running power plays can move the puck pretty well. Um, but I just, I just try to play a, a complete game and try to be able to play with everybody. Uh, this one's for uh, Ben. Um, so obviously Fayetteville presents a pretty great challenge. Uh, you guys have played them, I think, twice this year, and uh, you've skated. You've skated. You guys have skated pretty well with them, but haven't gotten a win yet. So, what do you look forward to the most? Having two opportunities to play against these guys, and what do you think the team's overall attitude is with having two opportunities to finally get a win against them? So I think I don't think I was here um, against Fayetteville. I think that was before my time, uh, but I did have the opportunity to play make, play against them uh, when I was in Knoxville, um, and I know that they have a lot of size and skill and speed, uh, at least up front. Uh, so I think uh, we're definitely going to have to slow them down in the neutral zone, um, force them to dump pucks and and get get back to those pucks quickly uh, as a defensive core and, and make a good first pass to to get some clean entries and um, you know out of our zone quickly and into theirs. Uh, but, you know, we're excited to play uh, another top-end team. Uh, we were happy with our results against Pensacola last weekend. Obviously, uh, we would have liked to get that extra point on Saturday night, but, um, you know, the opportunity to play uh, you know, a, a third-place team or, or whatever there are is, um, you know, if we can string a couple of wins together, we can kind of put the league on notice that, uh, uh, you know, tough times are behind us and, and we're moving forward. And this, this last one's for Coach. Uh, Friday, um, uh, Stuart was rocking the, the red shorts. Um, on Saturday, was he finally able to get a pair of blue ones? No, I think he wore the red. I didn't even he, pay attention he to wore that. His, he had his Cornell. Yeah, game. well, he played at uh, Cornell University at school, and they're red and white. So, um, I mean, it, it technically matches with us, so I'm, I'm fine with it. <laughs> it actually probably goes better with our road jerseys. I like the red pants. <laughs> Anything else, guys? So, in reading that uh, Denome was coming here, it and looking at his uh, like hockey DB page and stuff, it didn't seem like he was playing anywhere this year, and it seems like uh, from the quote that was given that he wasn't really sure he was going to. What was the conversation like to kind of convince him to, I guess, come out of semi-retirement to, to come back here? Um, well, I think it was more the reason he wasn't playing wasn't necessarily because of not wanting to. I think it was responsibilities, you know, back home for him. Um, and... I think he just, some things, the stars aligned or some things worked in his favor where the opportunity to kind of to leave home and and play again presented itself. And that's, you know, I kind of had heard through a third party that he was looking and um, he kind of shared some of that information with me when I talked to him the first time. And um, so it was about a month of just, checking in to make sure everything was going the way we thought it was going to go and it, and it did so um you know I'm, I'm ecstatic to have him i think brings a little bit more size and just watching him today he's got to get maybe into game shape a little bit but um, he can shoot the puck and i think he's going to help us big time So this is for Copes and um, Soupy. <laughs> um, I just want to know, how did you end up Copelander? I know pretty much how you got your nickname, but Soupy, where did that come from? How did you get your nicknames? Uh, my last name's Campbell. So Campbell's Soup is uh, <laughs> it's pretty, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty generic. I, I've met a few other Campbells, and they seem to all, all have the same nickname. <laughs> so... Uh, it's kind of followed me through uh, throughout my hockey career. It's kind of a, a crutch that people lean on. It's it's uh, it's an easy one. 
No relation to Brian Campbell, correct? None. I wish, though. Huh? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, because he, he was soupy, too. Yeah. Any other questions, guys? All right. Well, uh, as always, we really appreciate your participation. Uh, the last question I have um, is always going to be a trivia question. Before we get to it, uh, I wanted to ask Coach a few things about this upcoming weekend. Um, I know, Coach, we've talked about uh, Dylan Denemy a little bit. Am I pronouncing that right, Denemy? Yes. Okay. Um, I think so. <laughs> I'll have to ask him. Um, but today, if I'm not mistaken, it was the first time you saw him skate, uh, first time you saw him practice. Um, right off the bat on Friday night, because he is expected to play, wearing the number 96, what's, what role do you have in mind for him right off the bat? What sort of uh, game do you uh, look for out of him on Friday? Um, well, like I said, I think, I mean, he's been skating. It's just, you know, it's hard to simulate game speeds and, mm -hmm. and kind of three periods of doing it. So um, I think it's going to be all about, you know, my expectations or simplicity out of him in the sense that, you know, he may not have the hands and the feet really going right away. Um, so, you know, maybe it's more being good in our D zone and getting pucks out and getting the puck in and being physical and, um, you know, shooting everything when, when those opportunities present, them, present themselves mm -hmm. and um, just kind of being 200 feet, even if it's 20 seconds and you have to get off because you're exhausted, like just, just be 200 feet for 20 seconds and, We'll kind of uh, we'll kind of go from there. Great. Last question I have for you: um, Fayetteville this weekend, both games. Uh, that's a team that's really been improving ever since Jesse Kalecki has taken over. I think um, we've played. DJ alluded to it earlier. We've played two games against them. They were both close. They were both one goal losses. One of them was uh, opening night. It was an overtime. Uh, and Travis Jake had the game-winning goal. Uh, that's a team that uh, we've played really close a couple games in a row now against them. Uh, what kind of games can we expect to be in store here this weekend? Um, like Ben was talking about, they're a good team. They got uh, they have a bunch of guys called up right now, but even with kind of some replacements coming in and not really at his full roster, you know, he's done a great job and they're still winning games. So. Um, you know, they have forwards that are, are big and fast and can be physical, and they're really good off the rush. Um, for me, I think a lot of it stems from their decor. They move pucks well, so I, I think the key for us is um, being good in, on our forecheck, being physical, you know, making them earn 200 feet every time and not turning the puck over. And we just have to make their life difficult um, for 60 minutes or, or we're going to be in trouble. Absolutely, and hopefully we can keep the, the good times rolling on home ice. Like we said earlier, five straight home wins, looking for number six on Friday night. Historically, the Mayhem have been very good against Fayetteville at home. Uh, this season has actually been an anomaly uh, in that respect. But last question I have, as always, is going to be a trivia question. It's going to be moderately difficult, I think. The question is this. Uh, Josh Keplinger last season broke a franchise record on Pucks and Paws night. What record did he break? Yes, sir. Bill Richardson, congratulations. Well done. <laughs> Can't, all right. Can you... Yeah, that's true. Eight on the weekend. How many, how many goals and assists was it? Do you remember that? That's right. Wow, he nailed it. Congratulations, Bill. You've earned a, an autographed puck from these two gentlemen. To the rest of you, thanks so much for coming out. Really appreciate it. Thank you.